Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid, and man, this video is way later than I originally wanted it to be, so allow me to apologise for that guys. But, with that being said, uh, let's jump into my top 5 tips and tricks most people don't know in Final Fantasy VIII. So, to kick things off, at number 5 we have a simple one. The encounter rate in FF8 for random battles is quite high and can get very annoying very fast. And while there is an ability in game to either reduce the encounters by half or stop them entirely, you don't actually get that ability until a little later into the game. However, you can actually skip all encounters from the very start of the game with a simple little trick. All you have to do is actually walk on the pathways or train tracks on the overworld map because while you're on the path or train tracks, you won't actually encounter anything, meaning you won't be getting stopped every 4 seconds for a trash fight. Quite a simple one, but I figured I'd include it anyway. Now, for number 4, we move on to the more unknown things. Now, I'm sure a lot of you know that cards in this game are broken. They are so broken that you can very easily get yourself so overpowered that you could fight and defeat any boss in the game before you even face the uh, effort, thanks to card mod. However, Early cards are quite bad and the starting ones are even worse. Now, there's a little trick that can be done thanks to the card ability. You see, what card does in battle is it turns a monster into a card of itself. However, there is a small chance that instead of getting the card for that monster, you'll get a different monster card instead. And these other monster cards are always level 7 plus boss cards, which make your playing hand outrageously strong. For example, let's just look at the monsters in and around Balam Garden, shall we? Okay, so the T-Rex and Nat monsters can be carded into a Shumi Tribe card, and FYI, five of these cards card mod into an item that can teach any GF the card ability. Now, the Buell monster turns into a Krista card, Ice Glacier turns into a Jumbo Cactus, Bite Bugs turn into an Alivret card, and the Caterpillar monsters turn into a Trauma card, and finally, the Red Bats turn into an X-ATM092 card. Now, some of these cards you wouldn't normally get until at least disc 2 or 3, and even then, only if you go out of your way playing cards. So getting them this early can give you a major advantage if you plan on doing all of the card side quests, and it's something I do recommend doing on a 100% playthrough. Now, on to number 3. Uh, while Gil might not have much use in this game, a lot of people are like me in the fact that they would rather have a high amount of Gil rather than a small one. Plus, there's the trophy slash achievement for getting 100 million Gil. And since you can basically max out your Gil in a little over an hour with this method, there's no real reason not to. Now, uh, this can be done... <coughs> excuse me. Now, this can be done any time after disc 1, however, you must make sure to get the Carbuncle Guardian Force in Dealing City at the end of disc 1. Once you have Carbuncle, you want to learn its ability called Medrefine. What this ability does is it turns items into healing items. For example, you see all those mesmerized cards you have lying about? Well, if you card mod them, the item you get can actually be refined into Mega Potions that sell for 5,000 gil a pop. However, that's not the method here. What we're going to do is buy tents from any store and refine them into mega potions and then sell them for a profit. Now, to do this method, you need at least four tents, which will cost you 4,000 gil. And once you refine them into one mega potion, you can sell that for 5,000 gil, giving you a profit of 1,000 gil. Let's upscale that. So, say you buy 100 tents for 100,000 gil, you can then refine them into 25 mega potions, which will sell for 125,000, giving you a profit of 25,000 for about 10 seconds of work. Now, this is still quite basic though, so let's go a step further. On disc 2, you can get another GF called Tomberry King, and this guy has four unique abilities we want to abuse here, and they are Haggle. Sell High, Familiar, and Call Shop. Now, Haggle gives you a 25% discount at stores, and Sell High increases the amount of gil you get when selling items by 50%. Call Shop allows you to use any shop you have entered before from anywhere in the game. Now, we're going to make some serious bank. Okay, so you can now spend 75k buying 100 tents and refine them into the Mega Potions to sell at 187.5k. 
that's a cool 112k profit every 10 to 20 seconds. But if you have access to the Esther shop, you can also buy cottages for 1,800 each and two cottages refine into mega potions. So uh, some more math for you guys. 100 cottages with Tom Berry King's haggle skill will cost you 135k. Add that to the 75k for 100 tents, meaning you spend 210k gil. However, in return, you get 75 mega potions, which sell for an awesome 562,500 gil. That's more than half a million profit wise, though you're still looking at 352,000 gil profit. Now, uh, remember, you can do this in about 10 seconds. However, maybe you're a little slower and it takes you 20 seconds to do this. That's still 1,057,000 gil per minute or 63.4 million per hour. However, if you can do this in about 10 seconds, then you can get 2.1 million per minute and 126.9 million gil per hour. Okay, so we'll have a little bonus one here. Getting Lionheart on disc one is no secret. However, whenever I see people talking about how to get it, it's always the same. Getting Dragon Fangs from T-Rexes and Balam Garden, getting Pulse Ammo from the Laguna Dream sequence, and card modding Minotaur for the Adamantine. However, you can actually get this weapon earlier than Dealing City. You can get Pulse Ammo by card modding 20 Alanoil cards into two energy crystals, and then turn those into 20 pulse ammo you get the dragon fangs the same way as i said using the t-rexes and you can get adamantine from the adamantois monsters on the beach near dollar city meaning you now have lionheart about an hour earlier than the other method and you get to keep your minotaur card as well now in terms of time taken it depends on how lucky you are getting 20 alan oil cards can take a bit of time but if you're lucky, it is faster. If you're unlucky, however, it's going to take a hell of a lot longer than just waiting till Dealing City. It's entirely up to you which you want to do. However, this is the earliest possible way to get Lionheart. Okay, now on to number two. There's a way you can learn every GF ability for the first four GFs in the game in less than 30 minutes by abusing a respawning boss for easy AP. Now, on the PS1 version of the game, this is soft capped at around 400 AP because of the time limit. However, on PC, and I imagine sooner or later PS4, with the turbo mode booster, you can effectively earn around 1000 AP, giving you more than enough to learn every ability. So, how do you do it? Uh, well, first of all, you need to play cards uh, before the dollop mission and card mod some items to turn into magic, such as Tornado, or you can level your party up to an average party level of 30, so you can draw the best magic like Quake from T-Rexes to Junction to Squall's Strength Stat. Aside from that, you want to Junction Thundergut to Squall's Elemental Attack. With these two junctions, you can absolutely crush the boss. However, it needs to be done in a specific method, since if you deal too much damage, the boss will just auto heal, and so you need to make sure Squall's HP is yellow, so he can use his Renzo Kuken Limit Break. Now, with that said, uh, start and get to the end of the dollop mission, making sure to draw a siren from the boss on top of the comms tower, and make sure to junction her to somebody. With that out of the way, you're confronted with another boss almost instantly after, the X-ATM092, a giant robot spider. Now, as soon as the battle starts, keep switching between your characters until Squall can use his limit break. Once he can use it, and make sure not to miss a trigger, the limit break will deal enough damage to kill the boss and knock him down. However, he will get back up again, fully repaired. Now, once he gets back up, you need to switch back to Squall and use a normal attack. This will make the boss fall down again, at which point you need to run away from the fight. Doing this will earn you 50 AP. Now, you keep doing this and moving along the path until you get to a bridge. At this point, you can fight and defeat the boss as many times as you want, since as soon as you run away, the boss will get back up and you can fight him again for 50 AP every time. So, just keep fighting until you learn all the abilities you want. However, just make sure to leave a couple of minutes spare if you plan on completely killing the boss in the next screen for a nice little reward. 
Okay, now on to number one. Now, this is what I'm expecting nobody to know about, since back on the PS1 version of the game, this was almost impossible outside of Japan, and only really became possible when the game was ported over to Steam, and that is Chocobo World. Now, I'm not going to get into what Chocobo World is, other than the fact that it can give you the best items in the game, from the, de uh, the second disc after Fisherman's Horizon. Now, once you gain, uh, once you can control Garden, go to any Chocobo voice and just pay the kid to catch you a Chocobo. In doing so, he will give you a baby Chocobo called Chickabo. Once you have Chickabo, save the game and exit out. Now, load up Chocobo World from the game launcher, and you'll have a small 8-bit mini game controlling Chickabo. Chickabo will walk around the map, getting into events that can either be battles, sleeping, getting a weapon upgrade for himself or getting an item which can then be taken back into the main FF8 game. The items you can get in Chocobo World are broken down into four grades, grade A being the best and grade D being the worst. Grade D doesn't really have anything of note other than pulse ammo. Uh, grade C has a few good items such as mega potions and phoenixes, uh, elixirs and mega elixirs, and then some items to teach GF some abilities and a few blue magic items. Now grade B starts getting good though. You can get some of the best items here like ultima stones, hero drinks, rosetta stones, items to teach GFs the best abilities in the game, and finally, the very best item here is Solomon's Ring. Yes, you can get a Doom Train on disc 2 from this minigame, not to mention the items I haven't mentioned, with almost all of them being exclusive to either boss drops or high ranking card mods only. And yet, this is only the second best grade. So what sort of awesomeness does a grade A give you? Uh, well, how about the ability, uh, sorry, how about the only way to teach any GF the ability ribbon? Oh, and you get five of them at a time. Or how about five dark matters? Shaman stones or hungry coop pots? Three stars, a hundred needles, bomb spirits and monk codes? Seriously, all of these items are godly and normally require either extreme amounts of grinding to get multiple of, or are actually limited to only one in the normal game. Heck, they might not even be in the normal game like Ribbon. The Ribbon item can only be gotten from Chocobo World after all. And the best thing, you can do this AFK while watching a movie since it only really requires you to press one button occasionally. But that's where I'm going to wrap up guys, again I'm sorry about how long this video took given I promised to have it out a lot sooner, but I still hope you enjoyed it, if you did then hit that like button and leave a comment down below, did you know all of these, which ones didn't you know, and do you plan on using any of these in a future playthrough, I'd love to know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all later.